today from the Emmanuel TV family. The journey continues. The vision remains the same. Changing lives, changing nations, changing the world. I deliver you from any satanic covenant. Covenant of attitude. Covenant of attitude. Covenant of character. Be delivered. 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 Open your lips and begin to release yourself from any satanic covenant. Covenant of attitude, covenant of character, any satanic covenant. Covenant of attitude, covenant of character, covenant of behavior. Begin to release yourself. Release yourself. Release yourself. Get yourself out of this covenant. You are released. Be released. Be released. As the fire of the Holy Spirit descended on the people following the prayer of release from Prophet TB Joshua, the evil spirit that had destroyed this young woman is exposed and begins to manifest. The spirit that pushed her to prostitution and crisscrossed her body with tattoos is now being consumed by the fire of God as she is about to be set free. You are released. Be released. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Emmanuel. My name is Aisha Idrisu. I'm from Mari, but we base in Ghana. And the woman standing beside you, who is she to you? It's my mother. I want to thank man of God for delivering me last Sunday from spirit of prostitution. I'm a professional prostitution. You mean you're a professional yeah. prostitute? Yeah, international prostitution. Yeah. So when you mean professional prostitute, what do you mean by that? Okay, I put my pictures on Facebook and Instagram so that I'll be communicating with men, so that I'll be communicating with them to have an affair with them, so that they will pay me. So I started when I was in 9 to 10 years. On my way to going to school, I met an old man Deceiving me, giving more money, slept with me in uncompleted building. That is when it start, I started to have this spirit of prostitution on me since that age. I will be running after man, but not ugly men. I don't like that spirit, don't like ugly men. Only handsome men. If you are handsome and I like you, no matter who you are, if I look up in your face to face, I, will, I must to have you. So that is how it started. So you mean at the age of 10 years, you've yes. started meeting men? Yes. And how many men do you meet every day? Sometimes two, three, four. Yeah. Does it mean while you were doing all this, your parents, your mother, your father, they were not there to see you? Okay. My father dis divorced my mom when I was very young. So I'm the one taking care of my mom, my sisters, and my brothers. That age, I started being with men, going club with friends, smoke with small cigarettes, taking alcohol. And sometimes I'll be with my friends. Maybe we are three, four. One man who just told us that I need all you guys so that we will be going to the man place when the man who told us we must to practice ourselves as lesbianity before he will have an affair with us and we will practice ourselves as lesbianity before the man will have an affair with us and he will pay us and go back home so how many of you that you will be together that the man will be sleeping with you how many of you sometimes we are three four last sometimes two two girls sometimes three girls sometimes four girls 
So that is how I started doing it. I was inside the prostitution. I met my baby daddy. At what age now? When I met my baby daddy, I was 15 years that time. I was, be, I was 15 years. But the guy tried to change me, but he couldn't change me. So I get pregnant for him, and I give birth at 2012. And my mom told the guy family that the guy must to marry me. So they come and paid my buy price. One day I was at my mom's place and I saw somebody call me that the guy brought in my friend inside the house. So I go straight to the house and fight with the girl. And the guy mother called me and told me that a son will never marry me again. So I should just go away. That is how I went and rent my own apartment. I just told myself that if I didn't get married again, I should go back to my work and do my prostitution because that will make me survive and take good care of my family. So I just go back and rent my apartment and I meet, I call guys, sometimes two guys. I will be having an affair with two guys, three guys, four guys in the same night. So that is how I continue to do it. I still force myself to change, but no solution. Because I, if I stop, my family will not eat. My family will not do anything. So I said, okay. I went to a native doctor to tell the native doctor that this, this, this work I'm doing, I'm a prostitute, but I want to stop. I need quick money. I need blood money so that I can take care of my family. The native doctor said, okay. He told me to bring 8,000 Ghana cities. So I go and borrow the money and bring the money. The native doctor bought a plenty thing. He told me that around 10 o'clock, we'll be going somewhere, but I don't know the place. So 10 o'clock, I went to the native doctor's place, and he took me to a cemetery. He told me that I will bet three, three, day, three times a day. Mm. That was Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. I said, okay, well, if that could make me get the quick money, no problem. I will do it. And I followed the native doctor doing it, but no solution. I went to a pastor's. Not one pastor, not two pastors. Some of them will take my money. Some of them will be will sleep it with me, but no solution. I said I must to stop this prostitution. It doesn't fit me. So I need, and if I stop, my family will not eat. So I need quick money. You needed quick money. Yeah. Okay, why do you now go to all these pastors? What were you looking for? No, <laughs> Ghana pastors, they will tell you that they will give you lots of numbers. They will, <laughs> I said plenty of things. If you go, so you also went to them for help? For help. And what but happened after that? At long last, they would just sleep with me and told me that you will get the money. I will not get it. When I sleep and I dream, I'm swimming inside the water. That is, when I wake up in the morning, I will, if I find, I, I saw an handsome guy going or even doing something, sitting there, or I will just go straight to the guy and look at him, just like that. And How do you look at him? I will just look at him, just like that. I will just look at you. On, so that you will be just for having falling for me and having an affair with me. But <laughs> like for him to date me, no way. He, can, he will just promise me that I, I will date you, I will marry you. So this is how you get men. Yeah, that's how I get men. But I don't go for ugly men because <laughs> that spirit in me don't like a ugly man. Only a son man I be with. Because when I get you and sleep with you, I will just take my money and go my way. I don't know what will happen to you again. Okay, you said while you were looking for quick money, you went to do some rituals. Explain to us again, you said you were taken to graveyard. Yeah, the native doctor took me to graveyard and naked me so that there is a certain water opposite, just behind the grave. He told me to naked myself, go inside and swim and take anything I want. So that is how I did it for three times. And he gave me egg, put inside the water, and the old currency coin, I put in, I throw it inside the water and go back, but no solution. 
but I didn't go there to ask him again. So I have a one a friend in Nigeria here, a guy. I met him in, in social media, Facebook. I asked him that I need the blood money because I need to take care of my family. He asked me, uh uh, you don't have a father. I said I have, but my father don't take care of us, don't take off care of us, and my mother don't work. So I'm the one taking care of my family. So he said, okay, he will introduce me to um, Okotis. He introduced me to Okotis. So he told me to bring a certain money, but I couldn't get the money. That is why I didn't go and join the Okotis. <laughs> After that, I just decided to travel outside country so that I will stop that prostitution and get money. So I called one agent, and the agent told me that it can help me to travel, so to travel to Saudi Arabia before first. So I said, okay, well, I give my apartment to rent. I sold my everything. So I even borrow money on it, and I give it to the agent. That's the visa so that I travel to Saudi Arabia. That was last year, March. So. The agent do anything, and I, he told me that I'm going to work in a company. And I told him, okay, when I alight in Saudi Arabia, they took me to a certain house. And the boss inside the house told me I should bring my passport. I said, why? I do my pa I would do this passport with my money. He told me that I bought you. You are my slave now. I said, I, I pay a lot of money before I get here. He said, no, I buy you. I paid the agent. 250 million in the Ghana money. So I now call the agent. So you were sold 250 Ghana, uh, million yeah. Ghana CD? Yes. To this man? The, to that man. So I now call the agent. The agent didn't pick up the call. And I called my mom to told her. He said, okay, well, I should just manage it. So I said, okay, no problem. So you were sold to this man to be doing what? To serve him and his family for a good two years. As a housemaid. As a housemaid before he, they will release me to come back to my country. So when I'm inside the house, they were treating me very bad. Sometimes I will eat once in three days. And that it is not a food, maybe banana or orange. And I will just sleep. They will beat me up. They will do a very bad thing to me. I can't sleep. I would sleep maybe around 3 a.m. in the morning, and I would wake up 4 a.m. in the morning. And I would started, started working. I will, there's house is story building, three-story building. I, can, I will wash the house. Every day, I must wash the house with my hands and, that, uh, and parazo every day. So I just made up my mind that I, I must to survive in this house. If not that, I will just die. And because my family don't even know where I am. When I was working, they don't even pay me money. And it's because of money that I went to Saudi Arabia. So I said I must get this man, the woman husband. If I do something... You mean your boss? Yes, my boss. If I do something with him, I will be okay. I will be little okay in that house. They will not treat me the, the way they are treating me before. So one day, my mother and his children went out, and the, my boss said I should bring him a coffee. So when I do the coffee and enter his room, I look face to face to the man. So when the man just look at my house, he just started having an affair with me. That is how it started. That's the same way I did to God the man's son too. I was having an affair with the man. I was having an affair with the man's son inside the house. But they don't know. So, so you use the power in your high? Yes. I will just look face to face to them. When I, I look face to face to them, I will not shine my eyes or do anything. I will just look at you and you must have a fair with me. So they, they treat, they were treating me before. It just re reduced. If the woman is beating me or he don't give me money to eat, the man and his son will just disgrace the woman, insulted the woman. But both of them don't know that I was doing something with them. So that is how it was going inside the house. And I said, no, I didn't come here for that prostitution. I came here to work with my hands. So why am I doing this? I must get out inside the house. So I called one of my friends. She's in Dubai. And told her about that. And my friend said, these Arab people, that is how they are. So if you didn't do something bad to them, 
You can never survive in their house. They will even kill you. So maybe I should take their something and run away to the police station. So I take one of his son phone. Your friend advised you that yes. if you want to leave the house, you must do something wrong. Yes. So what did, they, what did she advise you to do? So I take one of his daughter's phone. And when they are sleeping, I just jump in the hall. It's not a small wall. I jumped the hall and went out outside. So I went, the police were ev everywhere. So when I went outside, I don't have their papers. They asked me, I said, I don't have. And do, the police took me to the police station and asked me, why did I run away? And I told them what they are treating me inside the house. And they called my boss. My boss said, Aisha have told me, so I don't like Aisha again. So I spent six days in the police station. And my boss came with a settlement. Can you explain to us, why did you uh, steal something from them? So that my boss who said, I don't like this girl again. I don't want to work with this girl So again. you did that so that yes. they can send you out of the house? Yes. Yes. So my, when I was in the police station, one day I saw my boss with a certain man. They came and they were just talking. So I just said that I ha this is the girl I sold. I said, I want to sell it to you. So I didn't say anything. And my boss said, this is your boss. He had, this is the money you are giving me. So this is your new boss as who you will have, you will work. I said, okay, well, no problem. So you were sold to another man? Another man. I said, okay, well, no problem, because I don't have a choice. If I didn't agree, I would just be in the prison, nowhere to go. They will even kill me, because they don't know my family. So I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> so I followed the man to his house. That house is even horrible than the first house. They were treating me very bad. I, I don't sleep. I don't do anything inside the house. It's not, I will work for the woman, and the woman will take me to his family. I'll work to this house. I'll go to another house to work so that they will pay the woman. And I'll go to the another house to work. They will give the woman money. So I'm just working house to house. So that, that's what I was doing in the second house. I said, these people will kill me. I, I will not go back to my country. So I must do something. Because it's for the sake of my family. That's why I came here. And I planned the same plan and I get in my first house. I said, I must have this woman husband. If I have this woman husband, I think my problem will be solve a little bit. So one day the woman was sleeping and his husband is inside the parlor. I just go naked and go straight to the husband. And husband, the husband have you affair. You go naked? Yes, and go straight to the husband. And husband have an affair with me. So, I, so in, the, in the morning, the husband called his wife and told his wife that the way they were treating me inside the house is not good. So they should be careful. Yes. Now tell us what happened. How did you manage to come down back to okay. Ghana? I, was, I ran away inside that house. And the police saw me and told me that this girl have been, like this girl, they brought this girl in police station every day. So we are tired with this girl. He must go to jail. That is how they put me inside jail. I spent like three and a half months inside there. So when I was inside the jail, I saw many Africans, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, many, and Ghana, many. So as I'm a Muslim, I don't, I don't pray. So one day I saw, when I was my first boss place, I used to watch Emmanuel TV on YouTube. So when I went to the prison, I saw that when the girls are praying, they will mention man of God, name God of TV, Joshua Epat. Then I said, I'm, though I'm a Muslim, but I must to join these prayers. Maybe God will save me free and go back to my country. So I joined them. We, all, we pray. We, do, we always pray morning and night. So one day I was just sitting there. I, I don't even know I will be free because my time is not yet. I must spend maybe two years or one and a half year before they will bring me back to Ghana. But I spent just three and a half months and they just call me that, Aisha, your visa is ready to go back to Ghana. That is how I came back to Ghana. So you were joining a group of people while they were praying together, watching Emmanuel TV, asking God to rescue them. And if God 
can rescue them, they will give their life to Christ. So you joined this group of people, and one day yes. you were called that you need to go back to your yes, country. they released me, and the people were still inside the prison, but they just released me without no reason. Okay, when I go to Ghana, I made my mind that I'll come to Senegal for deliverance because I know that I need deliverance. So I call one of my girlfriends, I, because I don't know, I don't have anywhere to stay. So I called her, and my friend said I should come. When I went to the house, I told my friend that I need, I need to come to synagogue. And my friend told me, to do what? I said, deliverance. And my friend just told me, so could deliverance give you money? Why won't you start your prostitution again? I said, okay, oh, it's true. Even if I get deliverance, who will feed me? Who will feed my family? So I should just continue my prostitution. That is how I started continuing my prostitution when I came back to Ghana. And, okay, and one day I was, I was, I dreamed that I saw a tattoo, a woman. It's, a, it's like a goddess. I saw it in my dream. So when I wake up th th in the morning, that faithful day, my friend, my girlfriend, one of my girlfriend showed me his phone that I saw a tattoo on the internet yesterday night. It was very, very nice. And I said, let me see the tattoo. So when she saw me there, Tattoo. It was the same tattoo. I dreamt about it, and I went to do it that day. So you dreamt, you saw this this image in your dream, and the following day you went and have this yes. tattoo on yourself. Yes. So what's the reason of this, and what do you actually do with this tattoo? These tattoos I have. Whenever I go out, I must to open my body, expose my body, so that when people see me, they will just have feeling something for me. So you were having this, and each time you want to go out to look for men, you have to... Can you tell us how do you normally dress? We can see some pictures here on the board. Can you tell us how do you normally dress, and when you dress like that, what are you actually looking for? Okay... The, this dress is like maybe when I'm going out in the morning, in the morning, maybe beachside or hotel. That is how I dress so that it will attack men. And this tattoo is the same in the morning because in the evening I don't even dress like this. This is even long. In the evening I don't dress like this at all. That is the beach side. I must dress this so that I will be attractive men. Maybe four men, three men in a day. I'll be having an affair with them. So when you came back from the journey you went to, and when you go back to Ghana, you continue your prostitution? Yes, yes. Okay, can you continue? Okay, so that was last three weeks. I was just sitting there inside my room by myself. It was evening time. My friends, we are four inside the room. They are going out inside the club. It was Friday. They told me that let's go. I said, no, I don't feel like going out today, so they should go. And they asked me, ah, uh -uh, you even don't have money, and mom, your mom is even sick, and you must to send your mom. Away. I said, I don't feel like going out, so you people should go. <laughs> Since I came back, I never pray. I even forgot that I pray, and God set me free inside that prison. Since I came back, I forgot to pray. So I was just sitting there that faithful day. I said, today I must to pray because I don't fit this work. I don't want to do this work again. So I just pray. I just pray that God of TV Joshua, please save me. You are the father of the poor. Help me and change me in this situation. And I slept and I saw man of God inside my dream told me, without deliverance, you, are, you have nowhere to go. And, and I, you have never met with the man of no, God before. No, no, you have no. never been here. I have never met him before. So, and I replied to him, could deliverance give me money? Because, yeah, inside my dream. And man of God just told me straight, with God, all things are possible. That is how I wake up inside my dream. And I said, I need to come to synagogue no matter what. But that day, I don't, it's like two days I have never even eaten. Only what I was taking, I don't even have even pin on me. So I was using iPhone 6, and if you sell it, it costs a, it costs a little bit. I said, okay, well, let me sell my phone, and came down here. So that's how I sell my phone and came here on last week, Sunday. 
So now tell us, how did you receive your deliverance during the mass prayer when you came last Sunday? Yes, I was sitting there. When the mass prayer was started, huh, it was like hell. All over my body was fire. So it's, some people were just told me that I should go straight and grab man of God leg. But I was like steam. I was just standing there. And I said, I must have came to grab this man leg because... He was disturbing me with the prayer. So I just take one, four steps, and I didn't see anything again. So during the mass prayer, while the prayer was going on, the evil spirit inside of you was pushing you to go forward to the man of God to grab his leg. And when you make attempt to do that, what do you say happened to you? I didn't see anything again. I just saw myself that I was sitting here. So you mean you got deliverance last Sunday? Yes, I got my deliverance. I didn't even feel like smoking or taking alcohol. I, even, I didn't even so enter you, the church. So before, you normally smoke, you drink. Can you tell I us am. what kind of cigarettes you take Okay, I past? smoke weed and cigarettes, but I smoke weed and cigarettes and I take a lot of alcohol. But since that day, I came... Since your deliverance... No, I didn't even attempt to do that or failing something for men or that. Since last Sunday? Yes, since that Sunday. You don't feel for men. What do you mean no. by you don't feel for men? I don't, like, I don't, if, if it was like before, I would just feeling something on me that go out to get men, go out to get men. But since that my deliverance, that thing is not more talking to me. I don't have that bad dreams. I used to fly inside a dream. A lot. Every day I'm inside the water swimming, but since my deliverance, no more. Shall we put our hands together wonderfully for our Lord Jesus Christ? The great deliverer who has delivered our sister from the spirit of prostitution and marine spirit that has possessed her for a very long time. And she explained to us how she has indeed used this power to destroy men and those around her. Is your mom aware of this job you were doing? Because you said that you were actually bringing money home. No, my mom is not aware because she don't have any choice. She don't have money. She don't have helper. So if I brought her the money, she don't ask me anything. So each time you come back home with money that you got from prostitution, she didn't even bother to ask you? No. Does it mean you have never gone to school? You didn't go to any college or no, no, study? No, no, no. I just stopped at school when I was in GHS 2. You stopped schooling when you were in GHS 2. Yes. Why did you stop? Because I don't have money. I don't even have that money to go to school. And my mom don't have. So that's why I said I must stop and just doing that prostitution. It will help me. And now, to the glory of God, today you are delivered. You are set free completely from the spirit that has been tormenting you for a very long time. What word of advice, before we listen to your mom, what word of advice you have for young ones who are watching you right now? Because in the first place, you left Ghana because you were looking for quick money. And when you got to Saudi Arabia, your situation grew worse. Can you tell us what advice you want to give to young ones who are watching you, listen to you right now? Okay, my advice is, especially the young girls, <laughs> They should be not rushing life. No matter who you are, no matter the poor you are, just be patient and wait for God's time because God's time is the best. And those women, if the daughters bring their money and they don't ask about where they get the money, they should be very careful and ask their daughters where they get the money because that is how we girls, we are very many, that is how we girls do and have money to give to our parents. So those women should be very careful for their children and advise their children. Shall we put our hands together wonderfully for our Lord Jesus? We believe that this word of advice you are giving to young ones all over the world is a typical example that they must be content in life, that whatever situation you find yourself, God's time is the best. When it's God's time for you to achieve something, your tension and pressure will never be required. And we thank God today that God Almighty has indeed brought you out of the darkness to this marvelous light. Now you can stand to testify to the goodness of God that the only solution to this problem is to have Jesus Christ. Accept him with all your heart and have him you have 
everything. We thank God for your life. Let's quickly listen to your mother. We believe that she will also have one or two things to say. Um, yeah, I say, Miss Ghana. Miss Ghana, Miss Ghana, Miss Ghana, Miss Originally, I'm from Niger, but I stay in Ghana. Okay, Mama, can you tell us, what do you know uh, about your daughter? I believe you've listened to one or two things that she has just said. And say, what did you say? You said, I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house for 10 years. I'm going to go to so my daughter, at the age of nine to ten, she became very stubborn. Anything I tell her, she doesn't listen to it. No, no, of course. Who they be? I'm because I try not to. They be I'm because I try not to. Miss Minnie, Papa, yeah, yeah. Onu no talk me banu straight. I made a war no. Na Minnie say. So I no do course. I'm no do GSS two. I want to go to school no. I'm because I say. I share students now. Who goes who goes school? No, so I know to me go school. Say me nibby, scam a day, man or so, and so no, and so on about one a So, um, at the age of um, nine to ten, when they, I divorced with their father, she was supposed to be in GSS too, but she stopped schooling. So, the mother now asked the daughter, Why have you stopped schooling? And the, the daughter said, Because you don't have money to sponsor me in my education anymore, I want to go and live my life somewhere else. Okay, are you aware that your daughter uh, was doing prostitution? In Tina Unim, a Jumaya, and now Ubanu womb. I shall send Bona be no me, Jumaya womb. Ne a chilling Boma, I'm Kongui, a Jumano womb. That was in the beginning, I didn't know the job she was doing, but it was later that I found out. Since she received her deliverance, what change have you seen in her? In T. Fitila Sande now, Uban Benya and the deliverance were now Unim Subaya womb. Sisi anu den a beti mi a kan a fani bra bon like den a wen hu se a change you e wo ni life mi. Sisi an bom biye de radia se a change ma fito oba ha o kwa edu nu subanya se sa ma o ye nu nan su nan su na di na mi nu na ye wo de mi ebe di nko ma na ju na ma tu de nu ma don ko be biya su da ina o ye nu so na su ka chira mi se sa na nyen pe na o de ye ma o ye nu fito oba ha mu de. Ma, I didn't put on a long song, you know, when I come in, put say, oh, we are one thing. Or did you win, did you, and then finally. Okay, so since her deliverance last Sunday, everything about the daughter has changed. She doesn't go anywhere. She stays in the house. They used to chat, which then they will use, they don't chat, but now they are very free. Even when there is, there is no food in the house, she doesn't go out. She always, she's always inside. She doesn't have any urge to go out. Yes, now, what advice you have for parents who are listening to you, looking at where you are actually coming from? What advice you want to give to parents listening to you right now? See, Madam Pacho, I think that the future is 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 that the Second one, so, so what's now when you be a yaw? So, what to me, my dear, say, won't to me any ye? To say me, madam, me who more and to me to me control, me cast at your own point to say me ye be, or no post or shape or the above boam. And see, my maker say, young by now, you want any yaw, but I remember you for now, worried, and yet. Okay, the first one I want to say is that divorcing is very bad. And the second one I have to say is that. Right now, we parents, as we see our children, because of the business the, the daughter was doing and was bringing money home, she was not able to control her. So parents, we should be able to control our children wherever they bring us something from outside. Yes, we thank God for your life, madam. We know that God Almighty has delivered your daughter and we just want to advise you, as sister, that now that God Almighty has set you free from all these evil spirits that caused you to be prostituting, we pray that God Almighty in his infinite mercy will grant you the grace to live the rest of your life for him. Make the word of God a standard for your life. Be close to Christ Jesus and receive instruction from him. We pray that God will grant you the grace to do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Vous entendre le témoignage et la confession de cette jeune femme qui a reçu la délivrance dimanche dernier à travers la prière de masse. Elle dit que tout a commencé lorsqu'elle avait l'âge de 9 à 10 ans. Elle est devenue une prostituée 
euh, internationale et professionnelle. Elle dit que cela a commencé lorsqu'un homme plus âgé qu'elle a couché avec elle, en la soulisant, en lui donnant des biscuits et des sucreries. Depuis ce jour-là, elle a commencé à développer justement l'esprit de convoitise sexuelle et de pouvoir coucher avec des hommes de façon professionnelle, même en postant ses, ses images sur Facebook et aussi d'autres euh, réseaux sociaux. Elle a dit que c'est comme cela qu'elle a couché avec des hommes un peu partout, qu'elle avait souvent cette, euh, ce désir ardent de coucher avec les hommes pour avoir récupéré de l'argent. Elle a même la conduite à pouvoir coucher avec d'autres femmes avant de coucher même avec des hommes. Elle a dit lorsqu'elle a décidé de pouvoir partir à l'étranger, elle a consulté un agent qui lui a préparé un visa. Et en arrivant justement à Abu Dhabi, le pays où elle avait pris ce visa, elle est, elle est entrée dans la maison d'un homme où l'homme lui a dit que tu es maintenant mon esclave, tu m'as été vendu par ton agent pour deux ans. C'est comme cela qu'elle a été, commencé à être maltraitée. Elle a commencé à, à, à ne pas pouvoir manger, même pendant trois jours. Elle ne mangeait pas, euh, peut-être une fois tous les trois jours. Et c'est comme cela que pour pouvoir s'échapper de cette maison, elle a commencé à séduire l'homme. Et comme ça qu'elle couchait avec le fils, elle couchait aussi avec le père. Jusqu'à ce que justement la maltraitance continuait, qu'elle a essayé de voler quelque chose, qu'elle puisse pouvoir être arrêtée. C'est comme ça qu'elle est se retrouvée en prison là-bas. Elle a trouvé beaucoup de personnes africaines au milieu d'elle, de différents pays. Mais ils étaient toujours en train de prier avec l'homme de Dieu pour faire type de choix sur YouTube. Elle s'est jointe à ces personnes. C'est comme cela qu'au lieu de faire un an, deux ans en prison, elle a fait quelques semaines, elle a été renvoyée au Ghana. Arrivée au Ghana sans avoir justement des ressources pour pouvoir s'occuper d'elle-même, elle a continué dans la prostitution, oubliant comment Dieu l'avait fait sortir de la prison à Abu Dhabi. C'est comme cela qu'un jour, elle a, les problèmes étaient tellement trop nombreux qu'elle a s'est rappelée de prophète type de choix, a commencé à prier que Dieu puisse pouvoir intervenir dans son cas. Elle a eu un rêve où le prophète lui a dit « Tu ne peux pas avancer dans la vie jusqu'à ce que tu reçoives une délivrance. » C'est comme ça qu'elle est venue à la synagogue église de toute nation. Elle a été délivrée dimanche dernier. Aujourd'hui, elle est complètement libre. Elle n'a plus de désir sexuel, plus de désir de pouvoir coucher avec des hommes pour de l'argent. Elle dit qu'elle est complètement rétablie, complètement délivrée en toute la gloire à Dieu. Escuchamos el maravilloso cambio de esta mujer después de la oración masiva aquí en la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones el domingo pasado esta mujer tenía un espíritu de prostitución y un espíritu marino ella nos cuenta que era una prostituta de talla internacional que ella solía publicar sus fotografías en Facebook y en Instagram para atraer a hombres y nos empezó a contar su testimonio que a los nueve años de edad, de entre nueve y diez años de edad ella empezó a prostituirse cuando encontró un hombre muy mayor, mucho mayor que ella, le que se acostara con ella por intercambio de dinero desde entonces ella nos cuenta que ese espíritu de prostitución estuvo perturbándola toda su vida hasta el domingo pasado ella nos cuenta que ella fue iniciada por un hechicero que hizo un ritual con ella en el río y desde y para traer dinero porque ella quería llevar dinero a su hogar entonces de esta manera ella tuvo este ritual para poder obtener dinero y para poder atraer a más hombres y nos cuenta que ella tenía un poder especial en sus ojos, en su mirada, si ella miraba fijamente a un hombre podía seducirlo hasta el punto que este hombre empezaba a perseguirla y no la dejaba en paz. Ella nos cuenta que después de este ritual las cosas no funcionaron, ella contactó a un agente para que la ayudara a salir de su país, Ghana, para que la llevara a los países a, eh, eh, árabes y finalmente cuando ella llegó allá ella fue engañada y ella fue vendida como esclava ella empezó a trabajar en una casa pero ella nos cuenta que en esa casa ella sedujo al dueño de la casa y al hijo de la casa pero finalmente ella por su ansiedad y por salir corriendo ella robó algunas pertenencias y fue llevada a prisión de esa manera después mucho tiempo después ella regresó a Ghana y nos cuenta que finalmente cuando ella se enteró de Manuel TV ella pudo venir aquí y dio la liberó a través de la oración masiva dada por el profeta TV Joshua ahora nos cuenta que su madre que está a su lado ella no sabía ni nada de la condición de su hija pero para la gloria de Dios ella ahora camina en la luz de su testimonio glorificando a Dios que esa, ese, esos vicios que ella adquirió como tabaquismo, como alcoholismo y prostitución se acabaron completamente y ella ahora está completamente libre y ella junto a su madre le dan gracias a Dios y la gloria a Dios y aconsejan a que no se separen de Dios y que los padres deben estar muy pendientes cuando los hijos traigan dinero al hogar para que ellos no, no, no falten y no dejen de tener ese control sobre sus hijos. Gloria a Dios. Continuamos. Mi nombre es Aisha Idrisu. I'm from Ghana. The lady beside me is my mom, original from Niger. I was the lady who deliver from spirit of prostitution and now I'm free in Jesus name. I see a lot of change, 
no more bad dreams no more like before i used to dream i'm flying in the dream swimming in the water and eating in the dream even having a fair in the dream but since i've delivered i'm okay i'm no more dreaming about those type of dreaming again before i used to feel like having something with guy if i look into a guy's high i will the guy will just fall for me but now i try it no more so that spirit of lust has completely gone has completely gone and before i used to smoke a lot i used to smoke weed and cigarettes i don't smoke i don't take alcoholic all i've gone i don't even feel the sense to do that again and you during your testimony you said before you would go on on the internet use facebook post your pictures to attract men i mean now that you're delivered what can you say about all of that i have stopped just planned that if i go to ghana I will just I will just block all my Facebook and the internet. I will block everything so that I will move a new life. And before you came to the Synagogue Church for Nations, just tell us the kind of area that you were living in before. The area I live, I live with my friends, uh, like a ghetto house. That's where I live with my friends. Yeah, and the, we prostitution. We do everything, a lot of things. So that place you are coming from is actually from an area where you are constantly with people that are involved in that prostitution. So as you are going back to Ghana now, do you mean that you're going to change that environment? Yes, yes, sure. I'm going to change that environment, yes. Well, we, we thank God once again for our sister's life. We know that the evidence of Christ Jesus' lives changed. Uh, we just want to hear one word from your mother. From Hajara Ahmedu, Bifi Accra, Ghana. Her name is Hajara Ahmedu. And she's from Ghana, but original from Niger. I'm a couple of Abra, one who says, He said, Mede Radiasi. Mede Radiasi pants a Wabra, one of whom he said, The Assassin. And to my Macassa, Mede Radiasi pants. My mom said she wants to thank God for everything because now I have changed, I've really changed, and she's very happy. She wants to thank God about that. We've heard all from our mother. We thank God for the deliverance and the life of our sister. And so, sister, we are here right now with a message from Prophet T.B. Joshua. Uh, the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, said that he really wants to support you in every area of your life as you're going back to Ghana now to start a new life. And so, on behalf of Prophet T.B. Joshua and Emmanuel TV Partners Worldwide, we're here to present to you this cash gift of 2,000 U.S. dollars and also the word of god the mirror which is just an encouragement for you to stay close to jesus and make his word the standard for your life i can't even talk i'm i'm really shocked seriously because i didn't even expect that at all i never expected that at all i'm really shocked i'm really shocked <laughs> i'm going to use this money to start a new life to start a new business so i thank god i thank Emmanuel TV. i thank man of god i thank Emmanuel partner Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. I'm free. Thank you, Lord. I'm wow. Free. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, we know, believe many people are watching you, even girls that are involved in prostitution, your, your people that knew you very well in the past, they may be watching you right now. What is your advice to people that are involved in such a lifestyle? My advice for especially ladies like Thank you.